right, everyone. Threshing, threshing that hay. You better believe it. One more, one more jaunt up a 14er. And yes, I'm gonna actually start with a tip of the day right now. That's right, so my, my tip of the day, and yes, I'm taking out the Salming Trail 5s, a very sturdy, well-cushioned trail shoe that is not, I'm not at 50 miles yet, but I'm enjoying the shoe a lot, very comfortable, a lot of good support in this shoe. So, uh, but my tip is if you wanna get into 14er uh, hikes and or running, I'd recommend checking out Mount Beerstadt where I'm at now, or if you're traveling to Colorado and you're just like, you know what? I wanna go try and run hike, like do a combo, run hike a 14er. This is the place to come. It's about an hour and 20 minutes from Denver approximately. So that's my tip of the day. Check out Mount Beerstad if you wanna come up and do this crazy running sport at high altitude. So all right, lacing up. Uh, and we're gonna talk about the hay in the barn, uh, recap the training block, all that good stuff. I'm just excited to get one more little baby stimulus at altitude. That's the goal, to just a little baby stimulus. Not quite, but it's still a great day. Top of Mount Beerstad in an hour and one minute, feeling good. Across the way here is Mount Evans, and I've actually never been to the top of Mount Evans, uh, even though I've done Beerstad probably 20 times and Gray's Peak probably 30 times. Uh, it's You can drive to the top of Mount Evans. And so it's just a little less incentive. There is a trail to the top, it's just a little less incentive to go run. Someday I'll do it, someday. And, um, Basically, I'm gonna sit up here for five, 10 minutes, just reflect on the training block. Uh, it's just been, it's been a journey, uh, a short journey because of the injury. But uh, anyway, just wanna reflect, think about it, not rush back down and uh, just soak it up. You know what I mean? Stop and uh, look at the rocks instead of smell the roses, if you know what I mean. And I made it back from the mountains, uh, heading into this custom t-shirt shop. Yes, to pick up the singlet. Let's see, he wasn't sure if it was gonna work out because of the rabbit singlet. Has a lot of little holes for breathability. Uh, but anyway, he said he gave it his best shots. We'll see how it turned out. Let's, let's go. Ooh, it's hot. I have a, a running YouTube channel. Oh, nice. So anyway, they, they'll, they're, they've been waiting to see this. So <laughs> not, not quite oh. as strong as the mannequin, but we're trying, right? <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, cool. Yeah. I mean, if you don't zoom in too much, you probably won't see the little ghost. No, we're good, we're good. <laughs> 
see the color on white. Yeah. I'll make him a mug just to see how the color shows up. Oh man, you guys know how I love coffee. He made Jason made a coffee too, or a coffee mug for me as well. Look at that. Oh, that is sweet. Oh my gosh, I drink a lot of coffee. Too much coffee. coffee. <laughs> oh my goodness, Jason hooked me up. Oh, that guy is awesome. Mug. He got the singlet done. All right, I'll show it to you in full uh, at the studio. All right, here we go. It is, wow, it's like 100 degrees down here. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about, everyone. Look at that a little Seek Beauty work hard and love each other on the front of my racing singlet for the Pikes Peak Ascent. Thank you again, Jason, for getting this done on time. It's my rabbit singlet that I love, so lightweight. And in case you didn't know, I have a merchandise, a t-shirt shop down below every single vlog. You just click on any of those t-shirts down there. It'll take you to the shop where there's hoodies, long sleeves, stickers, coffee mugs, all sorts of stuff. And uh, it's a way to support the channel. I do appreciate the support. And someday I will have racing singlet. So you can actually buy tank tops right now that are, it's like a cotton or it's a really soft cotton. It's not quite a racing singlet per se, but so someday I will actually have racing singlets with that on the front. Oh, I love it. It turned out so nice. So thank you again. And okay, I'm excited everyone. I'm just realizing uh, the Cleveland Marathon didn't happen two months ago because of an injury, so I was unable to walk you through the tapering process two months ago. It's all like dawning on me, like where am I coming up with all of these thoughts about tapering? Well, it's because I've never shared them before really on the vlog because I haven't raced a peak race yet on the vlog. So anyway, it's happening and, and let me attempt this analogy real quick. Okay, hay is in the barn, right? Okay, let's go for it. Till the soil lay the aerobic base, plant the seed, uh, build, the ba build the aerobic base and maintain, um, water the seed and watch it grow. That would be uh, basically adding speed work and interval work to your training block. Uh, thresh, I think it's called, or cut the, cut the hay basically out of the field. We're gonna call that the tapering. And then now, and then bale the hay, all right? Bale the hay, put it into blocks. We're gonna call that the sharpening, what we talked about yesterday. And last but not least, put the hay in the barn and let it sit there and rest. And that is what I did today. The training block is done, it's over. And now I enter into the racing block. So this is a five day window where I'm mentally focused. I'm ready to rock and roll. I continue to freshen up. Now here's what it's gonna look like. Today, when you're watching this Tuesday, three mile jog, really easy. Wednesday, I'm gonna go six to eight miles, a little more up tempo. Why? I don't want my legs to fall asleep in the taper. Even though we wanna rest, uh, I don't want my legs to fall asleep. So I will do six to eight, probably six, but we'll just see how the legs feel at probably, you know, a, not quite a tempo pace, just a little slower, and then just get some good strides in, uh, good form drills afterward. And then Thursday will be three to four miles, and then Friday will be basically two to three miles once again with strides. So that's the rest of the week. The hard work is done, and now we just wait. And now what was I thinking about on the top of the mountain today as I just sat there for five to 10 minutes, reflected back on this training block, and no doubt the first thought that came to my mind was all of you, really. Like, it's just like, I feel, I, I honestly feel a little bad about what happened with Cleveland. Not anymore, but I did in the moment because we were journeying and going on an adventure together trying to get to a, a starting line healthy and it didn't happen. And now we're basically there, you know what I mean? And so we did it. And so I was thinking about you guys on top of the mountain. I was thinking about uh, Cleveland and yeah, just the challenges of Cleveland. I was thinking about the swimming pool and how I think I stayed pretty mentally sharp and didn't let it drag me down, even though it was not the most fun time to be in that swimming pool, aqua jogging, swimming. Uh, and then I was thinking about the brevity of this training block. So how concise and pretty short it was, basically eight weeks actually, I always say eight weeks, but it was more like seven to eight weeks uh, because it was it was like July 1st where I felt like I could 
push through that phantom pain. Uh, so July 1st, and then I was also thinking about uh, all of, yes, the vertical climbing that we've done together in the past uh, basically six weeks. It's been a pretty solid effort. Uh, you've been encouraging me, not just on YouTube, but all of the people I've met up on the mountains here in Colorado. Like, there's been a lot of, the, remember the folks from Arkansas? Shout out to those folks from Arkansas who cheered me on going up the mountain. So anyway, thanks for being here. Thanks for coming along this training block. It's exciting. And now we enter into the race block. It's like we just, now it's just got to get to the starting line, healthy, happy, uh, focused, but also at peace and not overthinking it. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, we're putting one foot in front of the other. And yes, we're gonna go with barn for the keyword because the hay is in the barn. And a little bit of a unique question of the day, but I, I don't know, let's go for it. I don't know if I've ever asked this before. Maybe I have, I can't remember, but what is your, and this is kind of a more of a fun topic, but what is one of your favorite uh, quips? I don't know if that's quite the right word or sayings basically that you, that you, that you uh, when you're talking about running, what is a favorite saying that you use? Like. Uh, my cross country coach in college, Mark Wetmore, he said, "Hay is in the the hay is in the barn," meaning there's no more work to be done. Now we just wait for race day. Um, so anyway, what is one of your favorite sayings that connects to running? I don't know, something a little more lighthearted today. I appreciate you being here. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Oh yeah, here's just a couple old random, old they're they're old racing vlog. Sorry, they're old running vlogs but they are just kind of random old running vlogs, not connected to races, so check those out if you want to dive into the archive. All right, there it is for you. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.